If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. It's going to be helpful to solve this question by listing out the five key parameters that are involved in this chapter. So for example, we're going to look at the initial velocity, the final velocity, the acceleration, the amount of time, and then the displacement, which we'll call delta x. Now the question notes that this insect can accelerate at a rate of 4,000 meters per second squared. And if we assume that this little insect is jumping straight up, then we can call that acceleration positive 4,000 meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and write that into our table. We are also told that that acceleration occurs in a distance of two millimeters. And again, since it's moving upward, we can call that positive. So for the displacement here, we're going to put in positive two millimeters, but let's be sure actually that we need to change that into meters. And in order to do that, we can note that one meter is equivalent to 1,000 millimeters. So basically we're gonna divide two by 1,000 and we end up with 0 0.002 meters. So it's important to make sure that we convert that into meters. Next, we're going to assume that the initial velocity is zero meters per second. And then in part A, it's asking us to find the velocity of the insect after it has accelerated. And so the question in part A is asking us to find the final velocity. Now there are several equations from kinematics, so let's take a look at them. So here they all are. You might want to pause the video and see which one you could use to solve for the final velocity. Remember, we know the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the displacement. And hopefully you would determine that the first equation is the one that we can use to solve for the final velocity. So we'll go ahead and write it out over here. And we can solve for the final velocity by taking the square root on both sides of the equation. And so the final velocity will be this square root on the right hand side. And then we can fill in the known values. We know the initial velocity is zero. We have the acceleration of 4,000. And then the displacement is 0 0.002. And when you punch that into your calculator, you should get exactly 4.0 meters per second. So this turns out to be the final velocity of the insect. We can go ahead and actually fill that into our table as well. In part B, we are asked to determine how long it takes to reach this final velocity. So that question is asking us to find the time. So once again, you wanna pause the video and choose which equation you think is most important in solving for the time. It may turn out that there's a couple of options here. And perhaps the easiest one to use is the third one here. So let's go ahead and write that out. And then we're going to want to solve it for the time. So to do that, we can subtract V naught on both sides of the equation and then divide by the acceleration. And so here we have the expression for the time on the left side of this equation. We'll go ahead and plug in the final velocity, the initial and the acceleration. And then when we punch this into our calculators, we end up with 0 0.001 seconds. And if we need to convert that back, or not back, but if we need to convert that into milliseconds, we can just move the decimal place over three times to the right. So that would end up being one millisecond. So either the seconds or the milliseconds would be the correct answer. And now on to the final part. And to understand this, we'll come back over here and just try to draw the picture. Now, the insect, after it leaps, is now moving upward. Now remember, we determined that during the leaping process, the final velocity was four meters per second. But now the insect has lifted itself off of the ground and that four meters per second will become the initial velocity for this part of the problem. What's gonna happen next, it's gonna rise, it's gonna slow down and eventually come to rest up here. And so we can say that the final velocity in this case is zero meters per second. So we actually wanna come back and modify this table here. And so we'll plug in four meters per second for the initial, zero for the final. And if you look at this picture, you can see that the insect is no longer touching the ground. It starts a little bit of a distance off of the ground and then it flies upward here. And because it's no longer touching the ground, the only force that's acting on it is gravity. 
and because the only force that's acting on it is gravity, then the acceleration will suddenly switch to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So it's important to note that the acceleration is now this value. Again, that's because the insect is not actually pushing off the ground in this phase of the problem. It's actually not in contact whatsoever with the ground. Only gravity is acting. Now our job is to find this displacement. We can call it delta x or delta y. It doesn't really matter. Maybe this time we'll call it delta y. And so you want to maybe come over here and change this to delta y. And then you want to pick the equation that you can use to solve for delta y. We can make little changes to these x's. And perhaps the best equation to use, given our information, is the first one. And so we can write that equation out. And then what we want to do is solve it for delta y. We'll subtract v naught squared over to the left side. And then we'll divide both sides by 2a. And then we can plug in the known values. So we'll come over here and do that. The final velocity is 0. The initial is 4. And then the acceleration is negative 9.8. So we'll pick up our calculators and punch this in. And when we do that, we get about 0.82 meters. And so this would be the correct answer to part C.